Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostle. St. Andrew was one of the first ones called by Christ to follow him in such a special and close way. And he is also known as the patron of many countries, first and foremost being Scotland. In, and he, after he was martyred in the year 60, and he was crucified. However, there were a couple of key differences between his crucifixion and Christ's. First one being that instead of being nailed, he was bound to the cross. The other one was that he didn't see himself as being worthy of being crucified in the same way, so he requested that he be put at an angle, 45 degree angle. Therefore, that's why the symbol of Scotland on their flag is an X. That's actually a sideways cross to represent the martyrdom of St. Andrew. So, St. Andrew, for your acts of heroism and bringing the gospel to of Christ that you learned at his feet to the world, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let us say together the first form of the Confidier found on page 66 if you're following along. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have through my own faults sinned against your holy laws, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say a prayer for all those who have been separated from Christ and his church, that they may return home to where they belong. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, as the Apostle Andrew was a preacher and leader of your church in this world, May his prayers continually intercede on our behalf in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified. And one confesses with the mouth and is so saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. 
for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus, faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and light. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our first reading today, St. Paul writes to the people of Rome. He focuses on the importance of people being able to hear the saving word of our Lord. And, but to believe in our Lord, you first need to hear of him. And to hear of him, you need preachers. And to have preachers, there has to be someone sent to preach. That, my brothers and sisters, is our call. Because we if we are watching this today, if we are joined together today, we have heard the word of Christ and follow him and believe him. But someone had to show us. Someone had to teach us. Someone had to introduce us to Jesus. And yes, there are those of us in ordained ministry, that is our job to introduce as many people as possible to Christ. But those of us who have been introduced to Christ as well, can also introduce others. We are sent by our baptism to preach the word of God. I'm not saying you have to get your own church or anything like that, but in your everyday lives, in our everyday lives, we just talk about Jesus. We talk about what he has done for our salvation, the greatest miracle in the history of the world opening up the gates of heaven so that we may have eternal life if we accept it. But, as Paul says, not everyone will listen. Not everyone who hears will actually take that 
into their lives, into their hearts. And so what happened to St. Andrew as he was martyred in the year 60 AD? Third gospel, we have Jesus calling some of the apostles. And Simon and Andrew, who were together on the boat, were fishermen. And well, how powerful, how powerful must Jesus have been to just go up to a shore, call out on a boat, and say, hey guys, come follow me. And they did, just like that. They followed him. Why do we not do that? Why do we not just give up everything and follow him? It's something to ponder during this Advent season. What is holding us back from completely, 100% following Jesus and doing what he did in the world? Of course, we can't perform miracles, but we can bring his Father to so many people if we so choose. So what is holding us back? Because if we're held back here on earth, we will most likely be held back from the gates of heaven. So let us get rid of those barriers in our lives, my brothers and sisters. Those barriers that keep us from fully, 100% giving everything to Christ. Because if we do finally do that, we will inherit our heavenly kingdom, inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. But if we hold back, well, then we're up to the mercy of Christ and also his justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're following along, please turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> The Lord be with you. As we eagerly await the coming of the Son of Man, let us turn in confidence to our Almighty Father. Our response is, come Lord Jesus, come. That the holy season of Advent may increase in the hearts of all the faithful a greater love for and devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For come Lord Jesus, come. For the gift of peace, that it may flourish among nations and communities afflicted by war and violence, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For each of us here, that we may live this Advent with renewed resolve to prepare ourselves for Christ's return, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those on our parish prayer list, that God will lift their burdens, bringing them comfort and peace, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all the needs and intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all who have died and those who will die today, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Heavenly Father, we come before you with expectant hope and trust. May we be ever faithful in our spiritual vigilance and ever mindful of your promise to make us your beloved people. We ask all these things, both spoken and unspoken, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
You crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them rule over the works of your hands. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have the spread to offer which earth is given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness of this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, for the benefit of his holy church. Merciful Father, receive our gifts which we offer on this feast of St. Andrew, your Apostle. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We humbly beg you, the only high priest of your church, never to abandon your flock, but through your blessed apostles and their lawful successors, the Catholic bishops, safeguard it with a lasting care. May those upon whom you bestow the shepherding, teaching, and guidance of the church be courageous, zealous, and filled with apostolic fervor. May they teach the faithful your truth, forgive their sins, and unite them with you. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice of Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 4, which is found on page 88 if you're following along. Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh. In him, the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things, he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. This is the way, the truth, and the life. He has revealed your love to us. He, became obedient. he humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross and by rising, restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed, to undergo that suffering which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands. And lifting his eyes to you, his heavenly Father, he gave thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it.
For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Together. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we celebrate. Your return in glory, we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set forth this sign of our faith in him who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness, upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Together, Holy Spirit, come to us, fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice through which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May all who receive from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with St. Andrew, whose memory we keep today, with your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world. Grant it unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Page 95, let us pray together in confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Have a blessing which we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccatamundi, dona nobis patrum. Let's say together the first communion prayer on page 97 if you're following along. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be potted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. 
I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Andrew first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah. Let us pray. Lord our God, we rejoice in the memory of St. Andrew, your apostle. We have shared in the Holy Eucharist and are strengthened to follow Christ in our lives. May we also be assisted by the prayers of Andrew and all your saints. We ask this through St. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls, Amen. Show me now a prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. Okay, you can join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, and again on Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for the second Sunday in Advent. Hope you have a beautiful day. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in a state of grace and fight evil wherever and whenever you find it. For all the saints who from their labors rest, all who by faith before the world confess thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's farthest coast, through gates of pearl, streams in the countless host. Singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia, Alleluia.